Welcome back to Seeker Strength and welcome back to the Seeker Stand new show brought to you by the Road to Anywhere Part 2 and the Becoming a Heart program coming to the Seeker Strength app very soon. Very, very soon. Now, this past week, we saw the completion of the Asian Games in weightlifting and we had probably one of the most impressive performances in weightlifting that we've seen in quite a while. Li Huanhua, the Chinese heavyweight, competed for the second time in a month since the weightlifting world championships and weighing in at just 100 kilos he clean and jerked 233 kilos and snatched 185 kilos to take the win in the 109 kilo class the insanely impressive thing about this is it being done nine kilos below the weight class limit so around 10 percent of his body weight lower than what pretty much everybody else in class will be doing I think what we should really think about as well is the training weights or the relative training weight that most of those 109 competitors are sitting at. I can safely say most of them will probably be around 112 or 115 kilos just walking around. So Li Wang Hua definitely lifting some incredibly impressive weights. This particular number, 233 kilos, does bring to mind Ilya Ilian's performance in London 2012 where he competed as a 94 and Klina jerked a 94 kilo world record at 233 kilos when he was a 105 of course he clean and jerked 246 so putting a little perspective on Li Wang Hua's performance here at the Asian Games. This past week at the Asian Games we also saw the presence of North Korea returning where they returned in absolutely dominating fashion by setting numerous world records and beating many of the Chinese lifters on the female side of things. The clear elephant in the room here, as we talked about last week, is of course external drug testing, diplomatic pressure on those external drug testers, and of course it brings to light the positive drug test of Liu Zhaojun last year by external ITA testers travelling to China. Now, I know it hasn't occurred so far that we've had external testers going to North Korea. Apparently, they are going to be visiting North Korea in the next year or two, but Certainly, this is the main thing on most people's minds when they see this kind of dominance by the DPRK lifters. Sticking with the 19th Asian Games last week in China, we saw the return for the second time in 22 days. Rahmat Irwin clean and jerking another world record. He clean and jerked 201 kilos for an absolutely amazing world record in the 73 kilo class. And very cute and very humorously, we have him pictured here with his father, was very famous for flexing on stage, an absolute dynasty of biceps on show. This level of genetic predisposition cannot be overlooked, and I definitely really get reminded of Miso and Miso's father in terms of talent following talent and their success in competition. In an absolute brutal blast from the past, from 2014, the heyday of weightlifting, some might say, or Near the end, we have Alexei Lochev posting some reasonably big lifts in terms of the clean and jerk with a 240. He is, of course, famous for setting the world record, but then also testing positive at the same competition in 2015 in Houston. But more noticeably, we have this brutally fast 215 kilo high block snatch, which he lowers down. This kind of textbook power in the jerk for me is the stereotypical Russian jerk, and it is probably one of the main reasons we kind of favor this technique so so much not only is the kind of the stereotypical pressing strength and and speed there but also the way he dip and drives so quickly so powerfully the bear basically wraps around his shoulders Lochev is actually someone who i think could have beaten lasha or rather maybe put some points above him in the clean and jerk and push lasha to low limits had we not seen the wide-scale ban of Russia and Lochev's own particular ban. Following that, on his return to competition, he, of course, unfortunately dislocated his elbow and hasn't really, of course, been on the international stage since, but hasn't really returned to the form, which is very understandable. So now, sticking with weightlifting and massive totals, but deviating slightly outside the sport of weightlifting and going into the sport of CrossFit, we have American athlete EJ Hine, with an absolutely massive 420 pound clean and jerk and a crisp jerk at that and a 320 pound snatch PR. So this is 190 kilos in the clean and jerk, 147 and a half kilos in the snatch. And 
for me the main winner here is the crossfit lockout on that jerk it is the crown jewel in the crown of crossfit weightlifting is how well they extend their elbows in the jerk that crossfit lockout seems to be something that's a remnant of the huge amount of gymnastics work they do and long-term static holds and hangs and they get full range of motion in their elbows pronation supination elbows shoulders everything gets worked through very very nicely we end up with this lovely position overhead which comes through very well on their jerks when of course they're not pressing them out now in defense of ej he also competes in weightlifting but also seems to do a lot of crossfit as well so an incredibly young powerful lifter from america if you're a crossfitter watching these kind of lifts one of the main things i think you should really focus on is the fact that ej appears to be really focused on weightlifting here i often feel crossfitters lose a lot of time in training particularly a lot of time in their weightlifting training by wearing flat shoes or maybe trying to do too many complexes or too much variation with the lifts there's nothing wrong with simple snatch singles and simple clean and jerk singles here we have the slimmed down venezuelan fridge kedemar squatting 260 kilos with the classic pull away to squat rack which is a technique that I don't really understand the purpose of when we're doing heavy squats. It's not really a danger, but nonetheless, as an 89 front squatting 260 kilos, Keita Myers, of course, known for his ridiculously strong squatting. I think anytime you see someone almost triple body weight front squatting, it's always going to be incredibly noteworthy. But for me, it's the speed in this squat. Absolutely no hesitation at any point. I think for most of us, as we come above parallel, that front squat becomes much more difficult, but absolutely no signs of, of fatigue or slowing down for Kedemar. Kedemar is also rocking the gold Luzao Jun shoes, which are something that have been everywhere on every weight if they're I've seen recently at some point or another trying them out. Gold is certainly a statement, but if you are front squatting near enough triple body weight front squat, you can justify wearing a gold pair of weightlifting shoes. Per Cole Fernandez setting one of the most impressive upper body world records I've ever seen. Certainly one of the most impressive feats I've ever seen is a 51 kilo strict bar muscle up from a full dead hang. This has got to be one of the most impressive feats with an upper body I can imagine. This is so crisp, so clean. It looks like he could have done a couple of more reps. Getting to that turnover point for the strict bar muscle up is undoubtedly one of the most difficult points. Getting that chest or the bottom of your rib cage to just over the bar, or more importantly, getting to the point to your knuckles pointing to the ceiling, just getting your hands to turn over the top of the bar. And I think that is really one of the things that's missed out on when people are training themselves for that bar muscle up is actually making the pull strong enough to bring their body up above that center point of the barbell. So this section on pair brings to light one of the more new areas of strength training or one of the up and coming kind of factions within strength training and that's street lifting. So in the last number of months, we've been made aware of the style of competition, pull ups, dips, and of course, back squats. To be honest, I think it's a massive move forward. This kind of more general style of training people being strong but also not being exceedingly heavy to the point where they wouldn't be able to do the weighted strict muscle ups or the dips that we see them doing here now sticking with impressive feats of upper body strength i have no idea what this is but this is an indian thrower tajinder with a 120 kilo behind the neck rebound press i can't even call that a strict press because he is smashing that bar into himself. This is every strength and conditioning coach's worst nightmare. This is what happens when you have to run out of the gym for 20 minutes and people are left on their own. This is about as dangerous as it gets for me. That bear, two centimeters further forward, could be doing some serious damage or appropriately as well, two centimeter further back and you have both shoulders gone. The, probably the main thing protecting Tejinder from devastating injury here is the fact that he does appear to be some kind of horse, which is one of the reasons people do want to become a horse is that you can do dumb shit like this and probably get away with it to live to tell the tale. Here we have Pauline Grabosch, who is a German cyclist practicing some very nice aspects of a strength conditioning program. 
and touching one of the lifts that we've talked about a lot and has been making the rounds on the YouTuber side of fitness, most notably with Zach Talander's half squat experiment from Joel Seedman. And we, of course, have thrown our hat in the ring when we're talking about some rugby players doing the half squat or the box squat, and it does have some benefits for sport. But Pauline demonstrating some nice, consistent and normal strength and conditioning for her sport. I think another thing that's noteworthy for Pauline's training is when you look at the hang clean, a lot of athletes will try and go kind of hyper-focused towards a more weightlifting style of hang clean, where they're moving their feet effectively, they're very much hinging over at the hips. As we've seen with many, many throwers, many different athletes in their SNC, they might go for something more along the lines of an SNC power clean. So we see no foot movement here, we know we see no major amount of external rotation with the hips, and also we don't really see her shoulders coming in advance of the barbell too much. But this does look to be a very effective SNC training program. Powering over to our powerlifting section of the new show, we've got Russell Ori, aka Ross Swole, with what he termed the not the greatest session, but he got the work done, squatting 322.5 kilos or 711 pounds Fahrenheit for repetition on the back squat. An absolute outrageous display of strength. Most impressive here, I think, is the fact that this is a four times bodyweight back squat being done for a triple. Now, we've talked about Russell's squat quite a lot in the past. We've done a specific video on his squat if you want to go and watch it. It is incredibly impressive and very, very effective for him, but it's certainly more of the kind of specialized techniques for his particular lever lengths and his particular body style. So, of course, quadruple bodyweight squat for Dara would unfortunately be 550 kilos approximately, which would be an unbelievable feat for a set of triple, not even a triple, a set of one. But we only hope Dara can someday achieve this feat. Bilbo Swaggins, aka John Hack, is well on the road to returning to powerlifting after his brief stint in Strongman. And here he is conventional deadlifting a paltry 415 kilos. I'm incredibly happy that Bilbo Swaggins has returned to the sport of powerlifting and that we haven't lost him like we lost Larry Wheels a number of years ago. Uh, I do think Jan Hack is probably the greatest talent in the sport of, of powerlifting currently uh, and it would have been a shame to lose him. Unfortunately, we did lose Larry Wheels, the freak of nature, to the unusually popular sport of arm wrestling which is something that seems to be on the rise. I don't quite understand it, but I am happy for people to do whatever it is does make them happy, even if that is arm wrestling. John also benched 252.5 kilos or 556 pounds. He said, I'll take this after how trash my body felt after the squat fail. But John always says things like this and then proceeds to do something outrageously impressive. I assume it's just being humble. Remaining humble, I feel like, is this what this is. Speaking of remaining humble, we have Mega Gojira back again with outlandish squats for outlandish volume. So this time it's 370 kilos for a set of five. Now, I'm sure everybody's been watching Owen's love of fives and five by fives growing for the last number of months. But it's not 370 kilos, Owen. I don't think there's anyone else out there other than Jesus or Jesus Oliveira who can squat 370 for sets of five. There might be a few other strongmen, maybe some powerlifters, but Jesus really is in a league of his own when it comes to doing ridiculous squats. It's incredibly consistent with his technical volume or his technical aspect. He's incredibly consistent also with the technical aspect of his lift. Whether he's maxing or squatting 400 plus kilos or he's doing 370 for sets of five, they all really do look the same. Now, making your squat technique look the same from the bar to the top sets kind of has become a meme to some people, but Jesus really makes that a consistent part of his training is everything looks the same and everything looks very, very, very easy as usual. Rondell Hunt is shown here really putting into practice the quote or proverb try again fail again fail better in his road to deadlifting 410 kilos or 900 plus pounds 
He failed it four times in the preceding months and then finally proceeds to hit it for the conventional deadlift. And his conventional deadlift is something we have talked about before in terms of its positioning and he is certainly someone who's built for deadlifting. The crazy thing to look at here is it looks like Rondell was maxing his deadlift at least once every month, if not twice, for around five months leading up to this deadlift PR. So for most of us, we're going to be incredibly fatigued for maybe up to 10 days or two weeks following a maximum deadlift attempt. Clearly, Rondell has gotten over that fatigue. In general, for most people, not only was he maxing his deadlifts he was literally failing his deadlift so he did not only push the limits of what he was, could do he pushed beyond to the stuff he couldn't do which as we all know for deadlifting is something that is brutally fatiguing if you're not in the right place for it rondell made a seemingly small change but it looks like he's a little bit more toes forward so from his kind of toe to his ankle and his knee all seem to be in a slightly straighter line which is something we really like to see in the deadlift some people do like to have that slightly toes out position or even a lot of toes out in the effort to clear the knees but what you gain by clearing the knees you lose a little bit of that quad drive which is very beneficial especially in that conventional deadlift and i think in that 410 that he made it looks to be quite a very even position with those feet here we have zach talander's arch nemesis jessica bittner squatting 150 kilos for a double. She is, of course, the strongest or one of the strongest female lifters in the IPF. So if you're a weightlifter watching this squat, you're probably noticing some things that may not be ideal for a weightlifter. And this is the kind of torso inclining forward, the chin coming down and the shoulders coming slightly forward, the elbows dropping as they're standing back up. Now, this is very common if you're used to sports SNC weight rooms. You'll see front squats looking like this quite a lot, but it's not necessarily a problem if you're not competing in the sport of weightlifting or doing something like CrossFit where a thruster or a super upright torso uh, is very necessary for the sport itself. Now, when we're doing front squats like this, there are a couple of things that are very, very important, and that's Firstly, that our knees are traveling forward and staying forward. You see Jessica does a phenomenal job of that there. This ensures the quads are highly recruited throughout and kind of prioritizes the development of the quads using the front squat. And then the second piece is that you remain, you remain neutral uh, or slightly extended with that mid back and the upper back. And you see Jessica, although she does slightly lean forward with her torso, it's actually a very, very flat and neutral back position throughout. Here we have P-Man Mahari deadlifting 485 kilos. He's, of course, a strong man, figure of eight with a deadlift suit. But this is certainly, as far as strong man deadlifts go, who are allowed hitch in competition, one of the cleanest reps you'll see at that kind of 450 plus range. Uh, just a slight little bit of hitching at the top, but a very, very smooth pull. The real sad thing here, or the unfortunate thing here, is that P-Man is competing and lifting and training in Iran. He speaks about having several visa issues. He speaks about having issues actually going to other Arab countries to compete in competitions. And this is a major issue. So if you are one of the best people in the world in your sport, it may not necessarily be that you can just travel, compete in the world's strongest man or the world deadlift championships. Unfortunately, in his case, of course, travel visas are always going to be an issue. We saw this over and over again with Russian fighters going to fight in the UFC in the US. We, of course, see it in the sport of weightlifting with uh, North Korean athletes being somewhat targeted uh, by international competitions or having issues arriving at, at international camps. Here we have Timur Sam Karadzi, a Georgian junior lifter in the IPF. Now, my, some of you might remember his face from the shock and disbelief that Timur is actually a junior lifter when he was setting the world record in the deadlift or the junior world record. Here we have him squatting a very nice 300 kilos, absolutely piss easy squat in barefoot or in his socks looking like he could do at least another 30 or 40 kilos our final note then this week is mason the second person today to squat 370 for reps this time it's for a double 
Now, you might remember Mason's phenomenal squats from last week's news show and that textbook, very quad dominant technique. And this is no different. So incredibly powerful, very narrow stance with that toes out to the side uh, position, but a very, very powerful double. Mason, of course, is the Vivo lifter, if you remember from last week, squatting in the Vivo barefoot shoes, which offer absolutely zero support, but could be a nice way of replicating that barefoot position without having to actually take your shoes off in the gym. And of course, if you have sweaty feet and you're squatting barefoot in your socks, you might get some slippage. And slippage with 370 kilos is something that would be brutally punishing. Yeah, I think the slippage and also the social pressure of not walking around the gym in your socks is uh, is certainly warrants wearing barefoot shoes. That is, of course, true if you have feet like Dara, which are, have been compared to flippers of a penguin. So I hope you enjoyed today's new show. Just a little bit of different format that we tried. Let us know if you like it. Let us know if you prefer the old version. Let us know if you like the boat versions. Big new stuff coming this week for Seeker Strength. We'll be doing a full recap or full demonstration of what's coming. A lot of you probably know already, but we have been told by our developers to not send everyone over just yet. We have to hang on just a little bit further. In a couple of days, we will have the full release and the full breakdown of what we have been working on in secret for just about eight to nine months, I think, nearly We've been working on for just about nine months now, so quite a while. We've been working in the background and putting a lot of work into it, but we are very excited to show it to you guys.